Okay, the name of the problem is gravitational oscillator. In this problem, uh, we have a planet, let's call the, the, let's assign the mass of the planet, uh, indicate the mass of the planet by m and the radius by r. Um, and we open a tunnel which passes through the center of the planet. And if you put a mass m, here, release the mass from that point, due to the gravitational field, it's going to, be it's going to accelerate downwards through the, uh, towards the center. And when it reaches this point, due to the uh, balance between kinetic, kinetic and potential energy, it will uh, stop there and accelerate backwards. So it's, it is an oscillator. The question is, what is the frequency of the oscillation of such an object? In order to find uh, the frequency of the oscillation, we need to write the equation of motion for this small object m. As, uh, let's assume that the object starts from rest at some certain uh, distance from the center of the planet. The uh, gravitational force acting on this object depends only on, as you know, only on the mass inside this virtual spherical uh, surface. So F gravity, which is in this direction is g m whatever the mass inside of this spherical uh, surface let's call this m inside divided by the uh, distance of this object to the center indicated by r so it is divided by r square it's a vector the direction is towards the center, so it's negative r hat. And m inside is uh, the volume of uh, the surface multiplied by rho, which is 4 thirds pi r cube, and rho is uh, mass divided by the total volume of the plant, which is 4, pi, 4 thirds pi capital R cube. So this cancel, it is R divided by capital R cube times M. If you plug that in that equation, so let me write the equation of motion in the R direction. Uh, the force is towards the center, negative G M. M inside is R divided by capital R cube, M divided by R square, which is equal to mass of the object which is moving, M, uh, the acceleration, R component of the acceleration. So that is negative G, uh, M, M divided by R cube, all these are constants, and R cube uh, here, R square there, multiply by R, is equal to M, the acceleration, the, uh, the radial acceleration is R, double dot, double dot indicates the second time derivative of the R quantity. So the R double dot, in that case, would be equal to M cancels M, negative G, m divided by r cube r. This is the usual equation that we encounter whenever we study some kind of oscillatory system. This is r double dot is if we indicate the uh, angular frequency by omega, that is going to be this. The solution for that where omega naught square is gm divided by r cube defined. 
So the solution of that differential equation, as we studied many times, is quite simple. Just I the lost letter. Then R of t is A sine omega naught t. This is one of the solution, but we have two solutions. B cosine omega naught t is the general solution. We can express the same solution using a phase and an amplitude, but let's uh, say, uh, uh, leave it as it is. Okay, now, um, if the object is released at uh, R0, uh, released means that it was initially stationary, so find R of t. So released means V of t, V of 0 is equal to 0. And that also means that R of 0 is equal to R naught. Then uh, let's use this initial condition first. R of uh, 0 is equal to R a times 0, t is equal to 0, so sine 0 is 0, plus b, cosine is unity, at t is equal to 0. So b is equal to, this. I'm sorry, this is r naught. b is equal to r naught. This is one of the unknown. The other unknown comes from the v of t, v of 0, sorry, which is equal to 0. Uh, v is the time derivative of this quantity, this function, pos uh, position function. Take the derivative once, it's going to introduce you omega naught here. So omega naught, A, it becomes cosine, zero, uh, minus derivative of the cosine, B, uh, omega naught, B, uh, sine, zero, so that cancels out. 0 is equal to this unity, a is equal to 0. So the final solution for that case is r of t is equal to what was uh, the solution? b, a is equal to 0. So that term disappears, b cosine omega naught t with omega naught of square root of gm divided by r cube. So that's the answer for this gravitational oscillator. Thank you. Now let's have an example. Let's find the period uh, and the maximum possible velocity uh, where the planet in question is Earth. Find the period and V max. And the planet is Earth. So this is our blood earth. Here is the tunnel which uh, passes through the origin, through the center of the planet. And if we release the uh, object, a person, let's say, from this point, what is, going, uh, what is the period of the oscillation? Yeah, or when does it reach us here, which is related to the period? And what is the maximum uh, velocity or maximum speed uh, for such a oscillation. The maximum velocity is going to occur at the center where the potential energy is zero. So whatever the initial potential energy, it must be equal to the uh, kinetic energy at that point. That's the plan. And the only equation that we need to remember from our solution is the angular frequency, which was given as square root of gm divided by r cube. Uh, in order to find uh, the period, okay, we need to know these numbers. 
Uh, however, we, don't, we do not need to uh, know the mass or uh, gravitational constant g. Uh, if we remember the definition of the small g, the uh, acceleration near the uh, surface of the Earth, which is defined as gm divided by r squared. So using that, which is 9.8 meter per second in standard units. Then, uh, that is going to be, that can be written as gm divided by r squared, 1 over r, or that is g divided by r. This is g. Uh, what is the radius of the Earth? The quantity that you can remember is the circumference of the Earth, which is 40,000 kilometer. Let's use that, which is, in that case, uh, 2 pi r is the circumference. G is there in order to cancel that 2 pi. We write another one in the numerator. So oh, let's plug in the numbers. That is uh, 40,000 kilometer which is 4 times 10 to 3 here and 4 more there, 10 to 7. And 2 pi is 6.3, so let's make it 6, a little bit small. Let's make this a little bit larger, 10. So that's about the number. And uh, then 6 divided by 4 is 1.5, square root of 1.5. And that is uh, 1 divided by a million, take the square root times, which is the inverse, that is the quantity. And which is approximately equal to 1.2 times 10 to negative 3 radian per second. So the period then is equal to 2 pi divided by omega naught. Uh, then that is uh, 6.3 approximately divided by 1.2. Uh, times 10 to 3 seconds in standard units. So, which is what? Did I miss anything? Let me see. Uh, okay, everything is all right. Which is uh, 4, uh, 5,000 seconds. So, T in that case, 3600 is an hour, so it's about 1.5. Hours. This is the period, which means that the object will move from here to there and come back, which is one point, which takes 1.5 hours, 90 minutes. So, in order to reach to the center, it is one for uh, one quarter of that value. Uh, it reaches center in t over four which is approximately equal to 20 minutes, 25 minutes, maybe. OK, so that's the first uh, uh, end of the first part. What about the maximum? The maximum reaches at about that time. The maximum is, as said before, whatever the pot here the, we release it from rest. Here, uh, the kinetic energy is 0. It has the maximum potential energy. Here, the kinetic energy is maximum and potential energy is zero due to the symmetry. So the initial potential energy, which is GMM divided by R, must be equal to the uh, kinetic energy in the, at the center, which is 1 over 2 M V max square. M cancels M. Again, we use that. In that case, that would be equal to uh, let's multiply this by r, multiply that by, by r. So this is small g, then v max. v max is equal to 2g r take to square root. If we plug in the numbers, uh, how should we do that? 
that is going to be 2 pi r times g divided by pi 40,000 kilometers. This is 10 divided by pi is about 3. So 3 times square root of 4, which is 2. Uh, take the square root of um, 10 to 7. Uh, it's not that good. Take the square root of, I think it's right about um, 10 to 4, a little bit more than 10 to 4, because this is 10 divided by 3. Okay, cancel. 1.1, a little bit more than 1, times 10 to 4 meter per second. So uh, then D max, let me write this one more time, is uh, 1.11,000. 11 kilometer per second. Or if you convert this to uh, per hour, you multiply this by 3600. 36 times 11 is 40,000. 40,000 kilometer per hour, which is a well, more familiar unit for the velocity that we have. 40,000 km per hour, it reaches in 20 minutes. It's amazing. So that's the end of the numerical example.